Alright, what's going on everyone? Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and in this video we want to take a look at the new operating system created by the team over at Telestia. The cryptocurrency blockchain project has been coming out with a lot of great tools that I look forward to testing, and one of them is the CB operating system or the creator bubble. I want to go over what it's kind of intended for, how it works, give you a basic overview, and then talk about some of the features in it. But I do want to specify that what it's designed to do is basically run on an old laptop or an old computer. You're not booting off your main OS, Windows, Ubuntu, whatever it is, based on Daven, not Ubuntu. And they explain why in their FAQ. And then you take this old laptop, you combine it with a image on a USB drive. And now, no matter where I go, I can securely connect and do whatever I need to do, whether it's browsing the internet securely, privately, or submitting documents or uploading maybe some information anonymously that I want to get out to the public without revealing my identity. There's some super cool things that you can do with this operating system. But once again, the team that created it is called Telestia. I'm interested in what they're doing with Lascaux and Mercatus, uh, but we'll look about that or look at that in a future video. Right now, we're focusing on the Creator Bubble, which is an operating system designed for privacy and security. Obviously, a lot of privacy and security advocates out there. Matter of fact, if you look at my shirt, you can see what I am wearing. Um, but there's a bunch of different tips and tricks that one can do to protect themselves. And this is just one tool that has a bunch of different tools within it that can help you operate securely. But it's a portable operating system that helps you protect your privacy and avoid surveillance and censorship. Uh, it uses the Tor network, right, to protect your privacy in that censorship, and it has amnesia. So the moment that I decide that I am done with my session and I want to power down my laptop, I shut it down, I, I take off my USB, and I move on. Now, one use case that I can think of, and let's just be theoretical here and hypothetical, let's say that I'm in a country riddled with chaos. Maybe there's a, a current situation going on that's unfortunate, civil war, local war, whatever it might be, and I need to get across a border, but I can't take my laptop. My laptop's going to be confiscated, my device get be confiscated, whatever it might be, uh, but I want to be able to operate securely no matter which side of the border I'm on. Well, leave my laptop behind, get a hold of another computer on the other side, and boot up into my OS using uh, the Telestra CB, and now I can communicate online securely privately over Tor. I can open up whatever documents I had to sneak over through my persistent storage. Uh, I can do a number of different things. That's just one hypothetical situation, but that's not always going to be the norm. Maybe you're just a regular user who's just tired of Facebook, Amazon, whoever getting your data and then using that data and selling it to the highest bidder to now feed you ads on bullcrap. Well, this is a way that you can avoid that. It does include a digital toolbox, uh, which is just a select amount of applications uh, so that we can work on sensitive documents or communicate securely. Uh, it's ready to use. And it's actually pretty fun. I've already been in the operating system, again, built on Daven, uh, which is a Linux distribution, not Ubuntu. And of course, you can check out links in the description for why they chose Daven instead of Ubuntu. But some people that might use this is activists. Some of them call them hacktivists, but not all hackers are bad people. You know who you are. Uh, but, you know, just hide your identity, avoid censorship, communicate securely, publish sensitive documents anonymously through the internet. Now I will tell you that some websites will block you if you are trying to connect to them via Tor. So you gotta bear that in mind. And realistically, if you're gonna be using Tor and doing some nefarious activities, there's a whole different ball game and level of protection you need to go through. Just turning on your Tor connection and opening up your browser isn't gonna protect you if you are going to do those illicit activities uh, so there's some extra steps you need to check out and you can probably check out like some of the free resources out there like network chuck and others uh, So on and so forth, but yeah Somebody who's probably been affected by domestic violence, you know might want to protect their identity You know, they got a whole new identity anyways. They moved to a whole new location. They want to avoid this person Maybe this person has a little bit of uh, knowledge on how to track them They don't want to be tracked so they use this operating system or just whenever you need some extra privacy in the digital world now, some of the features, again, we talked about Tor. Uh, it has a network manager. One of my favorite ones is Pigeon, Onion Share, and then Air Cracking, which is for wireless network auditing. And then they even have the Bitcoin Electrum wallet, which is very easy. Like I can make a amnesia 
Bitcoin wallet, where I just use it for that one session until I shut down the computer and take out my USB drive to send and receive transactions, and I'm gone. I'm ghosted. That wallet doesn't exist anymore, or it's burned. Uh, obviously, they got some desktop applications like um, LibreOffice, GIMP, GNOME, Audacity. Uh, they also have uh, GNUPG, uh, GNOME screen, keyboard, all kinds of different apps, which is pretty cool. Obviously, you can probably... If you're familiar with the Linux distributions, you could probably play around and install additional applications, but now you're going to open yourself up to some issues where, again, one of the reasons why you would even use this is to avoid your data being compromised, your security being compromised, your privacy being compromised. And so if you install applications that want to get your location or want you to share your data or to store your cookies or this, that, now you start leaving what we call crumbs or a trail where I can come and find you if I really, really knew how to and really, really wanted to. But the operating system, again, is not designed to be ran as a VM. It's really designed, again, you take an old laptop, they even recommend a Lenovo ThinkPad, you image your USB, you pop it in, you load up, you can talk securely, interact securely, communicate securely, privately, and then keep it moving. But I wanted to show you via the VM and I'm just loading it up right now. And this is what it looks like. And upon initial boot, you'll be faced with a couple questions here where you could select your language, keyboard layout, formats, set up persistent storage to store some documents, maybe some bookmarks and Wi-Fi passwords. And by the way, a lot of people don't realize that if your device connects to a Wi-Fi network, that information can be stored on that device. If that device is compromised, somebody can gain access to your Wi-Fi. However, today's world, it's not hard to brute force Wi-Fi passwords. It's actually pretty damn easy. But now we can just go ahead and click start uh, Telestia CB, or let's just say create a bubble. And you're going to need to connect to Tor. Now you can connect via the bridge. If you already have a Tor bridge, you can click on connect to Tor automatically, which will automatically set up a connection for you. Um, it's only recommended connecting to Tor automatically if you're on a public Wi-Fi network or any uh, or if many people in your country use Tor to circumvent censorship. A couple places. You won't be able to do that, right? You're gonna have a hard time, but you could choose hide my local network and then you're gonna to need to set up a bridge. I'm gonna show you that real quick. To do it, if again, we're on our laptop, we're we're on Creator Bubble on our laptop via USB stick. Your laptop should have a webcam on it where you can use your phone to just send an empty email to bridges at torproject.org, right? Via a Gmail, a rise up email. And then you're going to get a QR code and then you just click scan QR code it detects your camera and then it will automatically add those bridges. Otherwise, you can add the bridges here manually if you really wanted to and then save that bridge configuration to your persistent storage if you chose to do so, which is pretty cool and something I know a lot of people would use, at least in this arena. But we're going to go back and just click on connect automatically just for right now. Uh, we can configure the bridge again. Question marks do give you additional information. Tor bridges are secret Tor relays. Use a bridge at your first Tor relay if connections to Tor are blocked, right? So if we were being blocked or we wanted to circumvent any issues with our country, ISPs, whatever it might be, uh, that bridge will definitely benefit you. But we just go ahead and click connect. You can see it's connecting right now. And again, I'm on a VM, which is not the recommended use case for this operating system for the Telestia CB or Creator Bubble. And then I could just hit start browsing and it's going to open up the browser it opens up the documentation section for this particular operating system, which again will be linked down in the description talking about system requirements, additional information, social contract, uh, you know, inst installed from Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you got, PC, burning a DVD, whatever opportunities that you might have or what every you know different uh variations and systems that you might have about persistent storage creating it configuring it matter of fact if i go to applications what i want you to note here is persistent storage is right here and if we open this app it will tell you everything you do disappears automatically when you shut down this operating system the creator bubble we can learn more but it's impossible to create persistent storage because i'm on a vm so again you want to do this on a usb stick but that's how you would do it. You just go to applications, persistent storage, set it up, configure it however you want. You can see Tor browsers in here. The Tor connection can be managed right here with this application. 
We got uh, a cloner where we could clone maybe some drives or the uh, a different drive. If we had a, a different USB connected besides this one, we can manage our files, key pass. And my favorite is actually going to be right here under Internet Electrum Bitcoin Wallet, where I can straight up just launch. And anytime I shut this down, this wallet's done for unless I back up the seed phrase, right? But let's call this wallet test. Next, standard wallet or import Bitcoin address or private keys if I have that in my persistent storage or if I have it remembered in my head, which some people do. Next, create a new seed phrase. Next, there's my seed phrase. I could also uh, uh, play around with some options. Next, put in that same free seed phrase again. And actually, I just opened up under accessories the text editor to be able to paste that in into that notepad. And now if I just copy it, control V, next set up a test you know password or wherever you want make sure it's strong encrypt wallet next and now this will sync up over the tor network and i will have access to this bitcoin uh network and i can send receive you know bitcoin transactions all in this session until i shut it down and again if i wanted to maintain the same wallet for whatever reason instead of just letting it uh forget itself i could always back up the seed phrase private keys whatever it might be but it's cool that that feature is already built in activities lets you kind of show the what i would call the mac style toolbar at the very bottom applications give you plenty of great things to look at cleopatra or use not look at graphics we've got image manager inkscape obviously libra office onion share dunderbird for email um we can watch video, we can listen to music through Audacity, system tools, we could apply again additional software. But again, if you do stuff like that, be mindful that some of those tools and some of those applications may make may compromise your creator bubble OS that's now going to be susceptible to sharing location data, sharing information, personal information. You don't want to do any of that. And you could see some of Telestia's uh overall ecosystem is being built in to this operating system which is very cool i love to see it great updates coming in the future but it's an operating system in a nutshell created on daven it's a daven flavor operating system created by the Tele telestia team that you can browse participate and work securely without compromising your privacy your data or your security and you can see that we're already connected right here already connected locally it's still on testnet future updates are coming in the future we go back to applications we go the other one and we'll probably do a different video on these tools in the future but connecting marketing professionals with real-time user generated data right i could put in my uh, telestia or tls address to get some information real-time insight transparent rewards user-centric design so on and so forth we'll talk more about that in a future video but the point is that the tools are built right in here Great to see system monitor, everything that we're used to for Linux flavored uh, software. And then we still got, again, our documents downloads that are just going to be here for the session until I shut it down uh, or put it into a persistent storage uh, container or directory. But this is an operating system that allows you to take old hardware like this laptop or even a desktop and a USB drive and go ahead and communicate securely and privately on the internet, uh, send files securely without concern. And again, if you're doing nefarious things, I would be very careful. I wouldn't go trying to hack the world off of this one operating system and just one Tor uh, connection. There's different levels to that type of game and I do not recommend it for new users. You're gonna get caught. You think you're in a Tor relay, and you're safe, and you're not. The government's gotten a lot better. There's some different ways to obfuscate yourself, as well as if you're really going to get into it, you shouldn't be connecting to just some random uh, Wi-Fi nearby to where you live. You should be doing it in a public place. And there's different ways that I can take this uh, laptop that has only a certain range as far as Wi-Fi connectivity and connect to a Wi-Fi that might be a good bit distance wise away from me there's different tools out there if you want to know more about that let me know in the comment section uh but just protect your privacy protect your security understand that your data is being very it's very sought after and people are getting paid high prices 
and they're bidding high for your data. And some of the tools that the uh, Telestia team are coming out with are very intriguing to me. And we'll cover some of those other topics in a different video. But that is the Creator Bubble operating system. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. And do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button, get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date. As well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel on what we do here. Or to learn more in their FAQ or documentation that will be linked down there. But besides that, you have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one. Mm -hmm.